everyone, and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock, and we're coming to you live from day two of Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. Delighted to have another wonderful guest here with us here today, Dr. Jeffrey Rediger. Dr. Rediger, welcome to the interview. Thank you. Doc Dr. Rediger is the medical director at McLean Hospital and also the chief of psychiatry. Yeah, good Samaritan medical center. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So Dr. Rediger, let's start with, with a, a question we've asked a few of our other guests. Do you think that we are in the midst of a healthcare renaissance? I do. I think that we are in the early stages of a time that we will look back and call this a renaissance in medicine. Why is that? What is it that you see? Well, I think we are in the very early stages of shifting over to a, a science of health rather than a science of disease. I think it was a step forward several centuries ago in the early industrial age when uh, science really took illness from the church. That was uh, a really important step and that allowed uh, early scientists to begin creating a taxonomy of disease right. and to begin identifying the signs and symptoms of one disease and how this different from the signs and symptoms of another. But then uh, that was still a science of disease and not a science of health. And I think now we are in the early stages of creating a science of health and that's a very different story. You know, and I think to um, Dr. Redditor, the fact that you're chair of psychiatry, mm. you know, obviously you probably bring a very holistic perspective to someone's health where you, mm. you realize the connection between that mind-body mm -hmm. uh, you know, interface and the fact that more of our solutions has to be so holistic. Right. Can you tell me in your role, and especially as chair uh, at a, an academic institution, mm. how do you see influencing medicine so that the entire patient is really considered? And that more, of you know, yeah. as, as we see this mental health crisis, that we really start to address that crisis. Yeah. So I think in both medicine and in psychiatry, we need a person-centered approach that's built around the needs and the uh, the needs of the person, and that's very different than a disease focus. I think that there is a mind-body gap in much of medicine, where we've had difficulty knowing how to bridge that gap for a long time, and the truth is the way a person feels about who they are, uh, the way they think about and experience their life has a lot to do with health, especially with the chronic illnesses. And uh, people who feel like they matter and that have purpose and value in their lives, they do better and feel better. And so I think positive psychology, frankly, has a lot to offer uh, both psychiatry and medicine. And so, Positive medicine and positive psychiatry are something that I think is a really great sign of the future of medicine and psychiatry. That's very exciting. And you know, I think too that we've had so many of our mm -hmm. guests on who've talked about how health is social and that it's so important that an individual yeah. feel part of their tribe and that the tribe feels connected That's right. really to the community around them. So I think right. that in your role, do you have a particular way that you like to educate the folks that, that really work under you and how to? Um, really better address that, that, whole, that whole person? Well, yeah, I think uh, if, from my standpoint uh, as a psychiatrist in a psychiatric hospital and then working as a psychiatrist in a medical hospital, I think people need to feel seen and heard as people and not as an exclusive focus on disease, especially with the chronic diseases which are so devastating. They consume 75% of the healthcare dollar, cause an enormous amount of suffering. And uh, the point there is that people need uh, to know how to change their lives in a way that gives meaning and purpose to them. And that is a very different focus than just managing the symptoms of a disease. Right. People who really do well have vital lives. And so. So let me ask you, too, uh, another solution that I think yeah. has been addressed and, and uh, hopefully we'll see more adoption around is the care team, yeah. where, where the clinician right. is going to have a host of um, experts, maybe a nurse practitioner, maybe a nutritionist, a social worker, yeah. maybe someone who right. is dedicated specifically to the spiritual aspects of the right. person. Do you see that team-based care approach really coming more into uh, you know, greater use? Yeah, I think so, because I think the truth is, if a person is struggling with something like even insomnia, for example, or a chronic illness, What's true is if you ask a nutritionist, you're going to get some help about what not to eat two hours before bed. Right. If you talk to the psychologist, you'll be perhaps helped with some stress reduction techniques. If you talk to a psychiatrist, they may be concerned about possible sleep apnea. 
And so everybody may have something to add. And if it's heart disease or um, lung disease, it's the same issue. And that all these different specialties will have something to add. And if that can be done from a wellness perspective, and perhaps uh, that's very person-centered around that person's yeah. needs, where a person doesn't need to run off to a bunch of different specialists over a period of two months or two years or 10 years. Stressful in itself, right? That's, that's right, and right. they won't have a way to integrate all that into one picture, right. and so it's, it's too fragmented to not have a team that really tries to look at things from their different perspectives. Right, right. So. You know, so another theme here, uh, Dr. Rediger, that, that we've had so much wonderful conversation around, I'd yeah. like to have your perspective on, yeah. is what does the empowered patient of tomorrow look like? That's a great question. I think that today we have really a, a victim-based healthcare system. Mm -hmm. It's really a system of learned helplessness, and all the power is really in the system and in the doctor, and a person doesn't know enough about their health, they don't know how to get the help that they, they don't know how to get the knowledge that they need to recognize things. And so as we can help with uh, these smartphones and apps and this technology, that really is the introduction of quantum mechanics and modern physics into medicine, that it's going to put power in the hands of people and it will be a system that's more rooted in what's right about people than it currently is. And I think that's gonna be ultimately really helpful to people. That's a wonderful perspective. You know, well, let me ask you one more question, Dr. Sure. Rediger. I don't know if this is your first, second, third, or how many exponential medicines you might have under your belt. What do you think about this experience? Oh, I think it's, I think it's career changing. I think that I have been concerned for a while that we're not helping people as much as we could and need to, to do. And I think that this is going to help me both as an administrator and as a clinician and a teacher to uh, act, actualize some things I feel very deeply about in terms of helping the power end up with people and people feeling like this is a system that is not uh, disease or deficit oriented, but really positive and wellness focused and much more able to put the power back in the hands of people. And I think that's what we need. Well, if you have time for one more question, yeah. I'd really like your thoughts on, you know, we know about the triple aim. We've know about what? The triple aim. Yes. And the triple aim of healthcare. Right. So, you know, there's been conversation too about the quadruple aim and uh, the fact that the physician, the clinician, uh, needs to be content, also needs to be yes. empowered in their role. Yep. So, in your job, you know, Dr. Radiger, how do you right. see really kind of changing the what can be a very difficult environment to practice medicine in. Yeah. You know, what is it that we can do, or maybe what is it that you're learning here from exponential medicine that you will take back that might improve that outlook for, for the physician? Yeah, well, I think that uh, I see doctors and nurses every day who are very stressed and don't know how to get themselves healthy, much less patients, because, again, it's a disease-based system. And so we, with a new paradigm to help uh, doctors and nurses and healthcare providers to really know how to take care of themselves in a way that uh, reduces their own stress and uh, helps them improve the quality of their own lives, that will be the most important thing to helping them know how to help patients. Absolutely. So, well, I look forward to learning more from Dr. Jeffrey Rediger, I'm sure, as you go back and conquer and, and uh, in implement all sorts of new solutions back at McLean and Harvard. I want to appreciate, or thank you so much for your time. Sure. Appreciate perspective. My name is Kate Warnock. Stay tuned for another live interview from the Guidewell Insights Lounge.